good Wednesday evening today. You are wa- you are watching a special recorded version of MDGOP's Direct Line Show. Our get- special guest tonight is Lori Friend, candidate for the United States Senate from the great state of Maryland. Our hosts tonight are, today are Mark Unkefer and Jackie Saxton. See, we're all completely thrown off. It's Sunday. We're not live. We can't call Direct Line live. <laughs> Where, what's going to happen? Who knows? Um, Joy, thanks for that intro. Mark, thanks for joining me and hosting. And Lori, thanks for joining us as our guest today. How are you thank doing? You. Good. Thank you. Yep. So you were sharing with us before the show that you're obviously in your car because you're busy traveling across the state for your campaign. Where were you last night? And what were you doing? Oh, I was in Talbot County where um, we there was a, a lot of us there just kind of meeting and, and, and greeting people and talking about our um, events and p- passing out our palm cards and our signs and where we stood on a lot of things. Um, there were uh, the only other candidate that was there that was another U.S. senator running was James Tarrington. Um, but there were, you know, a lot of people for central committee that were running. Um, and we were just expressing our different views and why we were running. And so, and from there, we uh, came down to Ocean City, spoke with some business owners, talked with them. And then um, there was some family down here that just stayed here overnight. And we're heading home. Um, we're going to stop in Montgomery County on the way home. Uh, we have an event there. If we can get over the Bay Bridge, because <laughs> as we all know, it kind of gets backed up sometimes. So that's what we're doing today. Well, well, Lori, that uh, getting across the Bay Bridge. You know, there is a quintessential um, uh, Mar- Maryland experience. Uh, uh, before the show, we were talking a little bit about your background. So you've you've got uh, sort of claims to multiple counties in Maryland. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Yes, I was um, born in Baltimore, Maryland, and in, in Dundalk specifically. I lived there until my early teenage years. Uh, my parents moved to Garrett County, Maryland, after vacationing there. And uh, I graduated actually um, up in, in, from Southern in Garrett County. I moved back to Baltimore in my early 20s for a while, worked there, worked in Towson, um, but then ultimately moved back to Garrett County, getting my nursing degree, raising my family. But I have um, family that is still in Baltimore. I have family on the Eastern Shore as well. Um, so I, you know, I have diverse, I have a lot of, uh, family all over the state of Maryland. So you're definitely a born and bred candidate then, which a lot of people like to see. So, you know, obviously we're less than a month out from the primary. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and what the reception has been like? Um, yes. Well, it's been, um, a lot of traveling. It's a big learning curve for me. Um, but, you know, I'm not a politician and I'm not polished, um, just learning the ways of it all, but getting out, meeting people, talking to them, listening to what their, um, their concerns are and what they want and what they would like changed, what they would like to see, what their frustrations are. Um, just, and yeah, I'm actually getting a pretty warm reception, you know, across the whole state, which was, is great. Um, and just, you know, traveling a lot, attending events and pretty much it so far. <laughs> so tell me, what made you decide to run for the Senate? Well, COVID, really, listening and experiencing COVID um, on being on the front lines of that and um, listening to my patients and, the, and the, the fear of it all, the frustration of it all, the fear of the vaccines, um, and then along with it, other issues, a lot, I, where I live, there's a lot of elderly people raising their grandchildren as well as parents, you know, and they were concerned after being home with them, um, what they were learning, you know, and hitting on like the critical race theories and um, the other issues that we have coming up, you know, the inflation. And, and they just felt like we in Garrett County do not have a voice. Like they feel in Washington and Annapolis, we, Western Maryland only goes to Frederick, possibly Hagerstown, but then we don't exist beyond there. They wanted somebody who was just like we are down to earth, everyday citizen in there making common sense decisions. And um, after I talked with them a lot, you know, they said, you know, you should run for office. And I would always be like, no, (laughs) I'm not a politician. I'm not doing that. Um, And I just, you know, it, it was just 
a calling that I felt like, I really felt like God led me to do this. Um, I felt that last summer and I kind of really just kind of pushed it off, but where we were really heading, I thought about it more and more. And I thought, you know, we really do need someone to stand up. And I just decided to try that. You know, I want to be the voice for Marylanders and the other, you know, before it was my patients that I advocated for. And now I want to advocate for Mar- Marylanders. So. So one of the, I would say biggest, and, and this should fall right into your background in nursing. One of the biggest, I would say, what the heck are we supposed to do here? Issues that we see both in, in Senate and in Congress that people are trying to deal with is healthcare. And, and, you know, obviously Obamacare is not working. That was not the solution, but what should, in your opinion, do you have any ideas when you get to Senate, if you get to Senate, what you would want to see us do about healthcare in the U S yeah, actually I had, um, someone actually messaged me that question. They were, um, frustrated with um, the Obama health care system and asked me if, you know, if I would abolish that whole, you know, scrap that whole thing. Um, and I think it's really hard to get rid of something like that that is already in place, but you can always, um, you know, do some reforming and, and revamping. And I think that maybe that's what needs done. Our health care, I believe, has gotten completely out out of control. And even as a nurse, I can tell you the frustration as a nurse um, with trying to get things that, are, you know, are covered, things that your doctors prescribe that won't even be um, filled, like at the pharmacy, we're running into that a lot. I'm having a lot of um, issues with my patients trying to get medications. Um, now they want all these pre offs you know, the doctors are frustrated as well. Um, I think that we really need to look closely at health care, making it more affordable for people, because we, we are in such a spot where we're, you know, inflation is getting so bad. People are going to have to try to decide if they want to pay their electric bill or buy their medications, you know, and it should not be that way for, for Americans. So tell me, what would you, what would, what could be done at the federal level to, to make things different? Um, I'm not really sure about how to revamp all that and, and how that would be, but I think that they need to look at making legislation go through for cost effectiveness for people. Um, better, you know, the, the coverage at the federal level, you know, we would have to just vote and decide and, and for, you know, hopes th- that there would be um, a, a legislative law that would could be put through that would be you know, better fit for each, each, you know, each person for according to maybe their wages or their salary, but and and, and access care for people, you know, um, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of people out there that need, that still need health care. And I think there need to be other agencies and things like that. Um, I don't know if I know the exact answer to that question. You know, I'm not really in tune with exactly what I can do on the federal level. Like I said, I'm still on a learning curve of exactly what we do as a Senate. (laughs) So tell me a little bit about some of the other issues. We've talked a little bit about healthcare, but what would your other priorities be in the, in the U S Senate? I, you know, the biggest one, one of the big one is the um, inflation inflation where, you know, where we're heading gas prices, you know, the electric, I know that they want us to be, I I think that we should be energy independent again. You know, we were, we were once before, I think that um, Biden has turned the spigot off to the American people with regards to that. I think that we need to open up the pipeline, you know, create those jobs and, you know, get the, get gas and fuel to um, Americans where it was cost effective again. So we're not, where we are now. So something else that's still on the forefront of a lot of people's mind, particularly as um, I don't think the Democrats are quite done with HR one yet, and they're still going to try and push that through is election integrity. Um, so as we, you know, barrel closer and closer to the primary and there, we already have um, mail-in ballots that are at people's houses. So this is already happening again, right? So we're, we're going to start seeing a lot more, Frustration coming out of the ballot counting process as we move in on to July 19th evening. Where is your stance on what we should be doing with election integrity or on HR1 as a whole? What's happening at the federal level right now? 
Yeah, that is, it is very frustrating. And I have to say, even through this election process, you know, I too myself worry that we are going to have a fair election. I believe that we absolutely need to have voter identification. Um, I believe that, you know, you have to, you know, people have to be registered. They have to be able to prove that they live where they live and, and they have their ID. And I know that they kind of push that um, HR one through. Um, I do think we need better election laws. Um, I, I like I said, I too worry that we will have a fair election, not just in this election, but in, in future ones. Which is why I think that we we do need to do something to make sure that we have um, an accurate count. You know, because with the past elections and how they have fallen, you know, it, it makes the American people you know, not really want to go out because they feel like their vote is not really heard. So, you know, I think we do need voter integrity there. So tell me about the 2020 election. Do you think uh, Biden was legitimately elected president? I don't believe that he was. I think, you know, there were too many of the popular vote for Trump. Um, but I, you know, I can't say that for sure. I didn't do any of the counting. I just think I've met so many people who feel like they voted for Trump and they didn't vote for Biden and they didn't understand why Biden is in. So. So let's talk a little bit about um, border patrol and, and foreign policy a little bit. What's your stances on What's going on with the border? What can we do to, to fix that whole situation? And then we'll go into beyond our borders after that. Boy, I wish I knew I had the answer to, you know, the, the, all the people that have come across and what we need to do with them or for them. But the, the border, I believe that we, I think that we should finish the wall, complete the wall that Trump started. You know, and I, I it's not that I am against, um, you know, people coming in, but they need to come in through the door and they need to do it properly and they need to, you know, come in and, and do all the stuff to become an American citizen, but not this all the illegal crossings that we have. Um, I think the, the Border Patrol people have their hands tied and we need to give them, you know, we need to untie their hands so that they can do the job that they need to do. So obviously beyond our borders, even though we're not seeing it as much on the news anymore, there is still a war going on between the Ukraine and Russia. And um, at least on the Republican side, I have seen both sides of, of, yes, we should still continue to send aid over to the Ukraine or no, we shouldn't. Where do you stand on that issue and what our obligation is to help our allies? You know, I always think that we should help our allies, but first we need to be able to help ourselves. And I feel like America is in a crisis right now um, and, and giving money to a country that I believe doesn't even like us anyway. Um, I, I think we need to take care of our own first. I really do. And, and we're really, you know, we're really hurting here right now. The American people are really suffering. So like I said, we, we need to take care of ourselves before we take care of someone else because no one's going to take care of us. So tell me, uh, obviously, this is an effort that's been uh, the, the, in the Ukraine has been an effort that's been tied in with uh, our NATO European allies. Um, where do you, do you do you continue to support NATO? Um, hmm. Uh Oh, she might have lost Dwight. Should, can we pause the recording since we're going to splice this anyway? So let's continue to talk a little bit more about foreign policy. We talked about the Ukraine and Russia. Uh, one of the more prominent threats that we're still remaining to see what happens is going to be with um, China's invasion of Taiwan. So in the event that that happens, obviously China gaining more power can have severely detrimental impacts on the United States. What would be your approach if that were to be, become a more imminent threat? Well, um... I had I knew that that was going on. I have to say I haven't, <laughs> with all this running around, been able to stay up on the news except for what I have on my phone. But um, I, that is, if China does take Taiwan, it would it would be a, a, a you know a threat because China, I believe, is trying to take over for the United States. I do I do fear that. Um, 
I do believe that um, we, I, I think that that should be prevented, you know, because I, I don't, I'm afraid that China and Russia will wind up holding hands together. And, um, and I, I think the United States really has to take a look at that seriously, because, you know, I, I think we are, you know, I think that that could be a, a big threat, you know, China taking over, because I believe China will, does want to take over for the United States. So are you suggesting something a little bit more proactive than just waiting to see what China will or won't do? Well, I think that we should um, definitely step in and, and make sure that we are aware and look into it to make sure that we know that they're not going to do that. Now, you may recall that one of the things that happened in part of all of this is that um, briefly, uh, President Biden said that uh, we would act to defend Taiwan uh, and then the White House immediately took back that statement because up to that point, it hasn't been American policy. We've, <clears throat> we've acknowledged, if you will, uh, quote unquote, the uh, one China policy, two different systems, but one China, and have never explicitly said that we would defend Taiwan. That said, there's always been the suggestion that we would. Um, so... Did, did Biden have it right when he said we would define, uh, defend Taiwan or did the White House press office have it right when they said um, he, over, he basically corrected him and went back to the old policy? Um, well, I know that we should not we should not get in and create any wars, but I do believe that if that becomes a threat to the United States, that we should step and to do whatever it is to protect ourselves. Um, do I know if it's the right answer to go in or not? I, I think it depends on the circumstances at the time. And, you know, I don't know that. So, so um, following up, we're going to switch gears a little bit here, but following the monumentous decision to overturn Roe v. Wade that came on Friday, I've already started seeing calls from Democrats um, on social media to pack the Supreme Court, which of course, is not something that we think is a good idea. Um, right. What steps would you take to prevent that from happening in the U.S. Senate? Um, it depends if we had people that we would have to, you know, nominate ju judicially or not, if there was anyone that was up for that. Um, you know, and I would, you know, you go through and look for their criteria. You know, we can prevent the packing, you know, it's definitely, you know, up for, you know, I think it should be, I think it should be pretty much even. It should be an even bipartisan. Um, that, that's, just, that's just how I think that we should put people in there. We should have an even keel on either side. Um, hopefully, I, I know that, I know the Democrats want the packing, you know, I think they've already tried to do that. So. So one of the issues that would come up with that would be the filibuster. So presumably the House could pass legislation. I'm not sure they would go that far. We'll, we'll, we'll but say, but theoretically they could. But it would go to the Senate, and and at this point, uh, it's, it's very difficult to get to 60 votes on just about anything. Uh, senators like the filibuster. I will say that when the Republicans were in charge, uh, President Trump said that uh, Mitch McConnell should get rid of the filibuster. So if you were a senator, where would you be on on filibusters? I don't think that we should get rid of the filibuster because I think it speak, helps speak for the minority of the party in there and it, it lets them represent their side. Um, so I, I think that we should keep the filibuster. So let's shift a little bit towards, you know, kind of looking outwardly towards November. Should you make it past the first hurdle, which is the July 19th primary, you're going to be going against um, Senator Van Hollen. Um, right. What would be your approach there to messaging towards not just Republicans, but independents and Democrats who have had the same senator for quite a while now and say, hey, maybe it's time for a change? Right. That's exactly what I would say. He's been in office for um, a pretty long time. Um, I know there's a lot of people who are frustrated with some of the things that he has said, even or, or even passed and, and his comment on the Roe v. Wade. Um, the other day about, you know, he was not happy with that, that they gave it to the state, that it should have stayed in the federal. And, and um, which I, I personally 
I, I think that it should have never been under the federal, should be under the state. But, you know, I am different. I, I am a change from him. Um, I think that we do need a change, which is one of the whole reasons why I am running, because people are frustrated and they and they want a change. Um, so that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do for them to make that change. All right. <laughs> Lori, thank you so much for talking to us today. We want to give you the last couple of minutes to tell everyone anything else you wanted to cover and also where they can find out more about you. Okay, hey, yeah. Like I said, you know, I'm 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 running um, for the people to be a voice for Maryland. I have family all across Maryland. I've been born in Maryland, born and raised in Maryland. I've raised my family in Maryland, and you know, I have the same concerns as you do. Um, I am not a rags to riches story. I'm not a polished politician. I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for 27 years. I've um, held my post through the pandemic and everything, and 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 experiencing everything that you all are the inflation, the border crisis. I want to make a difference. I want to make a change as well as you do. Um, you can find me at, uh, on my website on um, electafriend.org. And my um, email is uh, Lori Friend, or no, I'm sorry, electafriend at gmail.com. So I really hope to uh, see you all out when I'm out campaigning. and. Um, I'd like to have your vote on July 19th. I really need help and support. So I hope to see you then. Hope we can make a big change. Awesome. Thank you, Lori. Great. And Mark, thanks for joining me. And Thank you. We will be back next week, maybe live, maybe pre-recorded again. We'll see what happens. And <laughs> thanks everyone for watching.